Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, as you've seen from the thumbnail, is about powering my RV for boondocking. And originally I had purchased a Blue Eddy AC200 Max um, about a year or so ago, thinking that that would be the ideal solution to power the motorhome. And you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this video to say that the Blue Eddy isn't a good device. Um, in the time that I used it, it worked flawlessly and I didn't have any issues with it. But over time, I started to find out that there were a lot of limitations to having an all-in-one box that I wasn't willing to, uh, to deal with. And when it got to the point where I knew that I had to upgrade and get more capacity for the Blue Eddy and figure out ways to charge it in the motorhome, um, you know, especially while you're underway and you're driving and, and, uh, and so on, that I realized that I needed to get a different solution. So a few of the things that I didn't like about the Blue Eddy or solar generators in general is that, you know, you get this box and it has everything in it, but you really have no idea what's in it. Um, you don't know if the components in it are, um, you know, top of the line um, or any of those sorts of things. The other thing that I found with the all-in-one solar generator is that it has a very high idle consumption rate. My Blue Eddy was using about 25% of the battery capacity just to keep it running. And in a 24-hour peri uh, 24 period, that can start to add up. The other thing was that a lot of the solar generators are, um, are sold by um, companies from overseas. And it's extremely difficult to get any kind of tech support from these folks. You can email them, but um, there are stories on social media of people who waited um, almost, uh, you know, a month before they received any reply. So I didn't like that very much. And expansion was limited to buying a big expansion battery that weighed 60 pounds and had a big bulky cable uh, hooked up to it and I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't have room in the RV to deal with that. So I started looking around and what I came up with is I bought Victron components. And Victron components, Victron is probably one of the leading manufacturers of off-grid power um, on the planet. They have um, installations all over the world, whether it be um, on land, uh, you know, on boats, uh, motorhomes, um, cabins, um, off-grid of any kind. And I could also scale up my system without taking the whole box like a solar generator and, and having to replace it. Um, so I bought the Victron, I've got a, um, the inverter that I bought is the Phoenix 12 1200, which is more than enough to power what I need to power in my motorhome. And the Phoenix, um, one of the great features of it is idle consumption is next to nil. It has technology built into it where if you're not using it, it basically shuts itself down. It goes out every minute or two and checks to see if there's any power um, required. And then it will uh, turn itself back on again to provide that power. The other issue that I found with the solar generator is being able to charge it underway in my motorhome. So the great thing about the Victron energy um, system is that you can put a DC to DC charger on it and charge your batteries from your alternator. So 
I've got the Victron um, 30 amp DC to DC charger that I'll be installing in my system. And the great thing about the uh, Victron equipment is that it is very programmable. You can, you can change just about any setting that you need to uh, change um, to suit the system that you're dealing with. And you can protect your alternator and get a lot of power when required into your batteries. And then it will automatically, using its smart technology, um, bulk charge and absorption charge um, your batteries. So it works really, really good in that fashion as well. Now, one of the other things that you have to have when you're setting up your own system is an MPPT controller. So I got the Victron uh, 150 amp uh, controller. I'm going to be uh, installing three 200 watt capacity um, solar panels on my RV. So the the MPT 150 will more than uh, uh, handle the capacity um, there. Now the other way that you can power using the Victron system is they have this amazing um, 30 amp Victron um, power charger and it also can be set up to use um, and charge at different amperages for different situations. And again, it'll do uh, bulk absorption and also when your batteries are just about full, it'll pull back and, and make sure that it doesn't damage your, your lithium batteries. Now the other thing that I found really amazing about this uh, Blue Smart Charger is that it's basically doesn't make any noise. There are there is no fan noise while you're using um, the, while this charger is in operation, and that's the other thing that I found about the Blue Eddy AC200 Max, the charger that came with it. The fan was very noisy, and also the Blue Eddy itself, when it was uh, um, you know running at capacity or close to it. It was very loud. Um, the charger was loud. The fan on the device was loud. And um, this can actually go into silent mode. So if you're in your RV or your boat or whatever the case may be, it's not going to be making a heck of a lot of noise during the night if you're charging off of, uh, say, um, you know, shore power. Um, you're in a park and you have your RV plugged into shore power. You're not going to be um, having an issue with uh, a lot of noise. So, all of that said, the only downside that I see to installing your own components is you need to learn a little bit about the equipment and you need to make sure that you use proper fusing, proper cable, proper cable size, and you need to put a little bit of an investment into some tools. So, for example, one of the tools that I've purchased is a ferrule crimper. And you want to have a ferrule crimper for the simple reason that when you take a cable, like so, and you can see that it has a ferrule crimped on the end with some shrink wrap, it's really, really just gives you an amazing connection and you don't have to worry about any frayed cable sticking out one side or the other. So when you install your equipment and you go in to put it into your device, you're getting a, a nice secure connection that isn't going to short out on the cables beside it. So owning a ferrule tool and using ferrules to um, do your smaller cables is a must have. The tool with, with an assortment of connectors was about $70. So they're not cheap, but you know what? They're, they're a must have to do a proper installation when you're installing a system of your own. Now the second thing that you need to do 
is make sure that you use good fuses. There's all kinds of fuses you can buy on Amazon for the cheap. And, you know, you read horror stories about them melting and causing fires and, and all of that stuff. So all of the fusing that I'm going to be using for my system are all from Blue Sea. Blue Sea is a leading manufacturer of fuses and, and, and other equipment for, um, was mainly the marine industry, but also for RVs and, and all kinds of other um, installations. And you also want to make sure that you're using high grade um, breakers. If you're setting up breakers at different points in your system, you're going to want to make sure that you use a, a good breaker like a Blue Sea as well that is going to actually do the job that it's required to do um, if there is an issue in one part of your system. And the other thing that I, I have purchased to go along with all of my other tools is this Makita heat gun, which I use to apply my shrink wrap. It is such an amazing little tool and you know the the shrink uh, wrap uh, you know uh, shrinks very quickly um, no hassle uh, works really really well it's very light so you know if you are somebody that has Makita tools like I do um, you might want to look into getting one of these guys and it, it's really cool it it just it just sits up like that you can turn it on keep the um, the throttle going and just you know hold your your cable in there and, and do your shrink wrap so that's also a, a a great thing to have now one of the other things that I bought was it's it's an expensive little tool but it is a uh, a cable sheathing device to take the rubber off the cable before you put your fittings on and it was about 60 or 70 dollars it wasn't cheap but I actually seen it um, on another YouTube channel and it, it really saves when you're, when, you're, when you're cutting the sheathing off the rubber off your cable, it really ensures that you're not taking a whole bunch of wire strands off at the same time. So it, uh, it pays to, to buy good equipment um, when you're going to do an installation on your own to get a, a professional um, installation for sure and the same thing goes for getting a good quality crimping tool to put your lug nuts um, for crimping your lug, lug nuts to connect all your equipment together that requires lugs and all your fuses and and breakers and, and all that sort of thing and I found this one here which is also available on Amazon to be uh, um, works really really well it's easy to use and and hold on to and sort of that sort of thing so I wanted to do this video and explain my switch from Blue Eddy because a lot of you folks who follow my channel know that I had bought the Blue Eddy and I praised it very very highly and I and I and again I don't have anything against Blue Eddy or the equipment I just came to the conclusion that the functionality and the ability to monitor, um, the ability to change settings to better suit an individual situation um, wasn't there in the all-in-one solar box. And if you own Victron equipment, you know that the Victron app allows you to do an extensive amount of monitoring it allows you to get tech support from anywhere in the world because the, the Victron equipment and the app can be accessed from any, um, anywhere in the world as long as you have a, an internet connection and you can get somebody who maybe is a professional installer of Victron to help troubleshoot any issues that you might have and I found that to be um, a great plus as well. And I bought my Victron equipment through a dealer and I'm able to call that dealer at any time and speak to a person um, almost instantly to help me with design of my system, 
troubleshooting of my system and programming of my system, which I thought was very important as well. Whereas a lot of the solar generators, you can't talk to a human no matter what you do. And if you have an issue, um, there isn't really a lot of settings on that equipment to, to help you, uh, you know, um, program your system to suit your individual needs. So Victron uh, gets a big plus um, for that as well. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos, and this is just the first one. And, uh, you know, outlining the installation of the equipment and how I'm going to do it. And um, all the way to where it will sit in my motorhome and um, how it functions and how I'm able to um, monitor it and the performance of it. So hit that, uh, hit that uh, subscribe button and you'll, you'll be uh, able to see all of uh, the installation. I have a background in electronics, so you know that it's going to be done properly and you'll be able to get good solid information for your own build. And um, the other thing is that um, I'm going to be using all the proper ferrules and lugs and connectors and, and fuses and so on. So you'll be able to learn what kind of cable to use for different size uh, inverters and, and uh uh, solar controllers and DC to DC chargers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, if you haven't already, hit that subscriber button. Um, please hit that like button. It helps out my channel uh, a lot. Share it on social media if you think this video will help others. And um, hit the notification button, and then you'll be able to see all these uh, future videos that I'm going to be doing, um, outlining this installation going forward. So. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it and um, look for that next video soon. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. We'll talk soon.